I should call this video how to save 2000 euros just with a touch of EQ. Yes, boys and girls, that was the incredible Milos Maya from Prague, Czech Republic. What an amazing drummer, right? So I just spent a few days with him recording the new album of his band, Dimitri. Great band, by the way, check them out. And whenever I do drum sessions, whenever I do recording sessions in general, I try to test some new gear. And today I wanted to try some different overhead microphones. We were using a pair of Neumann TLM 107 overhead microphones on this session. Some world-class sounding German microphones. I think one of those mics is 1,300 euros. Pretty expensive. You have been asking me for more affordable overhead microphones. So that's why I'm checking out these lovely Lewitt microphones today. And we're gonna hear them side by side with the Neumanns. They are such a catchy name. Wait a minute. I've got to look it up. Um, LCT441 Flex. Yeah, I think they are, like one mic is under 300 euros for a multi-pattern microphone. So that is a thousand euro less per microphone compared to the Neumanns. Anyway, if they will sound like crap, I will let you know, no problem. But instead of talking all the time, let's just listen to a little more Milos Meyer. But before we compare those microphones, let me tell you something about overheads in general. So the way I do this, I don't regard the overhead microphones as cymbal mics only. No, they cover the entire kit. They are drum kit microphones. And they do not only give me the cymbal sound, but they also cover especially the weight and the body of the shells. And I usually go for a combination of rather bright sounding cymbals and dark sounding microphones. That works really well because those darker sounding microphones pick up the natural brightness, the air of those cymbals, and they also cover the whole the, the body and the weight of the shells. And I usually go for darker sounding large diaphragm condenser microphones or modern sounding ribbon microphones. I can put a list of my go-to overhead microphones below. Have a look if you're interested. I don't use those typical pencil condensers that people use as overheads. They just mostly sound too brittle for my taste, a little too fast also, and they just make everything sound a little tiny, a little click, clack, clack, clack. I want the mics, the overhead mics, to pick up the body of the shell and not the attack that much. I can't explain it in a better way. I like that combination of brighter cymbals and darker sounding microphones. But you know what? The most important thing before miking anything is to analyze the source. And in this case, Milos was bringing his own symbols, mainly Meinl Bizanz traditional symbols. And they sound a lot darker and more smoky than what I usually use here. And that means my, you know, microphone concept, my usual microphone concept didn't work. I needed something brighter. And whenever I record really dark sounding, smoky sounding cymbals, I use different microphones. Most of the time I use the Neumann TLM 107. They're just great sounding, really, really well made uh, microphones that sound thick enough to pick up the weight of the drums. They sound quite airy, so they can brighten up the cymbals a little, but they don't sound harsh. Beautiful sounding microphones quite expensive. So that will be a very tough competition for the Lewitts. And I know that the Lewitt mics all sound a little more airy, a little brighter than what I use as overhead microphones. So this, with these darker cymbals, was the perfect moment to pull out 
the Lewitts and to see how they compare to the Neumanns. So let's have a look at the tracks. So these are the two takes that Milos played for me. Over here in red we have the Neumanns and here in green these are the Lewitt overhead microphones. Down below we have the closed mics, so we got the snare here. Five toms. And then some extra cymbal spot mics, but very soft. This one is a hi-hat and it's at minus 14 dB. Ride China and so on. And all those tracks are not processed at all. The only exception is that there's a compressor on the room microphones. Let's have a look. We're also going into my bus compressor, which is parallel compressing the drums. This is something I always do. Even when I start sound checking, when I, when I listen to the first microphone, I always go into an SSL type compressor when I listen to drums. So you can have a look at the meter. It is a very gentle compression and it's in parallel, so it looks a little more drastic than it really is. In case you're wondering why you're not hearing a kick drum, the reason is we did this session with a kick pad. So there was no acoustic kick drum in the room and we recorded the kick drum straight to MIDI. So we're just listening to samples right now. The kick drum we are hearing now is one of my drum shot samples mixed with one of Jens Bogren's drum samples. Links below as usual. Anyway, this sounds really nice, but we're here to compare the overhead microphone. So let's just listen to the whole mix, the whole rough mix of the drums, and I will switch between the Neumanns and the Lewitts. So this is, wait, this is Neumann, this is Lewitt, Neumann, Lewitt. Let's start with Neumann. And this sounds pretty damn close, right? Let's listen again. Start with Neumann. I can hear a difference, but I guess we have to listen in solo. I think 90% uh, of all people can't make a difference here anyway. So let's just listen to the Neumann's soloed. And I will switch, yeah, to the Lewitt and back. And now there's a clear difference, right? So for me, First of all, I have to say, I don't really hear a difference in quality. I really like the transient response of the Lewitts. They are fast, they are in your face, but they don't sound like some of the small diaphragm condensers that just seem to be too analytical and too fast and too clicky. It's a very nice sounding transient response. The off-axis response is fantastic on those microphones. That is important for overhead microphones, you know, um, because they will pick up whatever, the crash symbol right below the microphone, but also maybe the china that is over here or another symbol over there. And a lot of cheaper microphones really get a very colored sound the more you get to the side of the cardioid pattern, you know. These microphones have a very, very even frequency response and that makes them great for overheads. It's not that important for vocals if you don't have your vocalist jumping around the microphone, but for overheads, especially on bigger setups, that is an advantage. And I even tested this because you can actually switch between uh, having listening to this cardioid or to the cardioid of the other side of the capsule. 
which is really interesting. So I could listen to the side facing away from the source. It sounds really good, at least not resonant, not weird at all. So it feels like those microphones are well done. But one thing that is different from the Neumanns is the frequency response. Not too different, but the Luids sound a little more edgy. I think that is around maybe 2 to 4K. It's not actually the top end, but below that, 2 to 4K. Here they sound a little more mid forward, like the higher mids. They sound a little more aggressive, a little more edgy. Let's have another listen and switch between the Neumanns and the Luids. I start with the Luids. The Neumann sound a little more smoky to my ears. They seem to have more lower mid information, more woody mids that make them sound a little darker and a little warmer. But I think the real difference is in the higher mids, like 2 to 4K, where the Lewids just are more aggressive than Neumanns. Let's go to a passage where he plays some cymbals so you can hear the difference. And here you can hear the difference really clearly. So the Neumanns always sound a little ribbon-like, you know, a little veiled in the upper mids. But I love that because it sounds very hi-fi in a way and very gentle and just nice. And the Lewids are a little too aggressive in that range. But because all the other parameters, except for the frequency range in the higher mids, especially the transient response, sounds so good, I think this is something that can be treated with EQ. So let's have a listen. Let's choose a measure where he plays a lot of different symbols, like this one. Go to the Lewitz. And now let's try to remove some of that edge. And that should be around here. That's 2 to 3K, let me find. And that really gives him that smoky Neumann character, you know, the, the edge is gone. Let's go back to the Neumanns. This is even closer than I expected. Now the Lewids sound even more open because they also have a touch more high end, but all the, 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 the edgy 2, 3, 4K information is, is gone. It sounds a lot softer, more gentle, just, just nicer, beautiful. And the Neumanns seem to have a little more around here. Let me see. Oh, that sounds really, really good. Now the Lewids sound even more hi-fi than the Neumanns, and the Neumanns seem to have a little 1K honk honk there. You see, what a little EQ can do if the basic quality of the microphone is there. So let's have a listen in the mix. I think there won't be a real difference anymore. <laughs> 
Now I prefer the Luits even. <laughs> I should call this video how to save 2000 euros just with a touch of EQ. Let's check out the part where he plays the, the cymbal overhead solo. Where was that? Here? Enough said, right? Pretty damn good for a fraction of the price. I don't hear a difference in quality. I prefer, let's say, the native frequency response of the Neumanns. If that's worth a thousand bucks to you, I don't know, because I showed you that with a little EQ, uh, this can be taken care of. So, uh, this is pretty fucking amazing. Um, yeah, I would not use either of those microphones when I record brighter sounding cymbals. I have to say that. But whenever I reach for those, I could also reach for those. Anyway, I have a pair of Neumanns, so I don't really need them. But for someone like you who is, who is shopping for a new pair of overhead microphones and you don't want to spend 2,600 euros on a pair of these, uh, maybe the Lewitts are an option. You know, why not? So I could survive with a pair of these for the darker sounding drum setups and maybe a pair of AKG 214s for the brighter sounding setups and I'm good. No, good microphone, seriously. All right. That's all for today. I want you to subscribe to this channel. Many people forget that, how can you? You know, if you're still here watching, you should subscribe, right? And ring the bell, you know, the usual blah, blah, blah. You can also subscribe to my email list to get some free samples, get some free multitracks, get some free IRs and stuff like that. There are, you will find all the links below. Uh, I will leave you here with the amazing Milos Meyer. Don't forget to check out his band Dimitri. They have just released their first English single called Chernobyl. Usually they sing in Czech and now they're starting to yeah release english stuff as well there's a link below to dimitri check them out they're great if you want to see and hear more of this amazing drummer milos meyer uh, there's a link below to his fantastic youtube channel where you can see him drumming and he also has a project called drumming syndrome where he even plays entire shows uh it's amazing just Check out Milos Meyer. what a fantastic drummer, what a cool guy. And check out the Lewitt microphones. Nice microphones, nice people. Hello to Austria. Um, that's all for today. I love you all. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.